Welcome to the Property Unleashed podcast, a show about property, entrepreneurship, and personal development. This show is designed to give you the foundations and building blocks to move forward on your journey and live a more inspired life. Hello and welcome to the Property Unleashed podcast. I'm your host, Mark Fitzgerald. And as always, it is superb to have you joining me here today. So we've got a belter on our hands, as I like to say. But before we start, have you taken advantage of the free resources that I offer you? If you haven't and you would like a deal analyzing spreadsheet to help you stack those deals or you would like a 10 step guide on how to get started in rent to rent or maybe you just need help planning on my 90 day planner, go to the show notes, click on the links and download it for yourself. And then let me know if it's helped you and how it's helped you, because that's what that is all about. If you're not on iTunes or you cannot see the show notes, then look me up on Facebook or Instagram. Click on the link in my bio and you will have access to be able to download those there as well. They're not there forever. So while they're there and they are at the moment of the recording of this, so it's well worth having a look. And if spreadsheets and PDF are not your thing, then please feel free to click the link in the show notes and bio as well. And you can watch my three part getting started in rent to rent and making money from property that you do not own videos series as well. So that is there for you to download and to get the most from. And I have to say, even though I am saying it myself, they are pretty darn good. So have a little look. Tell me what you think. And if I can help you or I have helped you with any of these, then let me know. Drop me a line. Drop me a message. I am here to help. I love seeing other people succeed. Go over and get them now. And if they aren't available, there will be some other brilliant little freebies there for you. I used to learn from others who offered these sort of resources when I started out in property. So I am now doing the same and helping people along the way. So let's move on. The five steps to knowing whether you have a great deal or a bad deal is what we're going to talk about today. So we're going to go through these and I'm hoping that they will help you if you are analyzing any deals. I'm going to do it more on a rent to rent basis because that is pretty much what I specialize in. So these are in no particular order, but I just think that they'll help you uh, understand whether or not you are looking at a good deal or a bad deal. As I see a lot of people getting into bad deals, really deals that they shouldn't be getting into. And so I want to try and put something out there where you can have a bit of a baseline as to what you want to be looking at and what you don't want to be looking at. So number one is probably the most important and one that everybody should really, really dig deep into. And that is, of course, the areas. So if you're looking at buying property, if you're looking at doing rent to rent deals, even if you're looking at doing deal sourcing, you need to know the areas. You need to understand what the area is like. Is it a good area? Is it a bad area? Just because it's a bad area doesn't necessarily mean it's not going to be a decent deal. It just means that you may have to look at specific tenant types. You may not get the rents that you particularly want, and you may have a bit more hassle than you would expect with anything else if it was in a better area. But don't get me wrong. Even properties in good areas can still be a lot of work, can still have their problems, and can still have tenants in them that aren't always the best. Or, as we see a lot Um, tenants do tend to start really, really well, but obviously in life situations and circumstances can change and so can people. So you can have the best tenant in the world to start with and they can slowly go off the rails. Um, but likewise to that, it's not here. I'm not here to try and put anybody off. You've just got to be mindful of the fact that you're dealing with people and not everybody's going to always stay, you know, the same. But I think if you've got a good rapport with them, if you've got a good understanding and and, and a mutual respect, then that's half of the battle. But the area is a big one. So, you know, in this day and age now, you can go on and check Street Checker. You can go on and check loads of different um, 
loads of different sites in your area, uh, even a council website and everything, and check out what's going on in your area, local police reports, and just see what streets are getting lots of crime uh, and problems and antisocial behaviour and what streets are maybe a little bit quieter uh, and and. Do your homework. So basically, I, I see a lot of people skimping this or not quite understanding it. Worst case scenario, I always tell people is to walk the streets. Maybe a, a couple of different times. I wouldn't say particularly walking around at night. I mean, at night, anywhere can feel unsafe. Uh, even town centre, you know, you can walk through a town centre. It can be quite quite busy, but you, you can feel uncomfortable. But I would say different times of the day, you know, morning, lunchtime-ish, afternoon, maybe early evening when people are home. Uh, just walk around the areas and and get a feel for them. Get a feel for the the sort of people that are living there. Get a feel for you know so that'll help you understanding your tenant types for the area. That'll help you understand what needs to um, what needs to be in the property. So you know you you don't want to do an HMO so to speak conversion, sticking lovely tellies and and making it the best if it's not in a desirable area for that. But in that area for for working uh, um, people. It may be that if you set the budget, you know, don't particularly put all the tellies and everything in because people will bring their own and they're happy to do so in that area. You know, you don't overspend when you don't really need to. It's up to you. It's all personal choice. But area and knowing your area and making sure that um, when somebody says, you know, these specific roads, you know, what suits the road, you know what the road and the area are like are vital. When I was very early on in my uh, rent to rent business, should I say rent to rent career, I uh, I made a mistake and I took on a property in a road that I would have never, ever have thought of taking a property on because I didn't know the area as well as I should have. Um, as it happens, I actually made good money out of that deal and I made it work. But uh, there were moments where I regretted it. There were moments when I thought that I'd made a bit of a mistake, but uh, as I always say, if you uh, go in with the right mindset and you make sure that you have a plan B, you can make things happen. And like I say, I tweaked and changed slightly what I was doing. I made it work and yeah, it was all right. But I'm trying to help you guys so that you don't do the same sort of mistakes and that's really what it's all about through experience so know your area make sure you dig deep on your area and you are the professional of your area number two numbers know your numbers know what profit you want to be getting if you're doing rent to rent know what profit you want to be getting from the size of each property know your rents you know know that for a fact that if you've got a five bed property and your rents are £700 a month, but you're only making £500 profit, that you're going to lose money. You're going to lose money somewhere along the line when you've got a void. And that's not a good deal. That's not a deal you want to be taking on. You want at least, at least at the very minimum, your profit to cover one room void, if you have one, at the very least. But I see a lot of people not really understanding the numbers. Fudging the numbers is another big one. So you can get hold of a spreadsheet. You can use my spreadsheet if you want to you can download it here. Uh, you can put all the numbers in, but don't try and manipulate numbers to work. Don't if if there's a certain ceiling for rooms in your area, don't do a deal trying to get higher rents. Yes, you may be able to achieve higher rents and that is a bonus. So have that done as a bonus, but always go in with the worst case scenario that your room rents will be whatever the standard room rents are for the area. If your numbers stack doing that, you know you're onto a good deal, not a bad deal. But if you have to rely on putting those rents up to actually make the deal work, it's a bad deal and one that you need to think twice about doing just in case in that area you cannot let the rooms because they're just overpriced. And the people who live in that area do not want to pay, even if they're the nicest rooms in the world, that sort of rent each month. So just know your numbers, know when a deal stacks up and when it doesn't. If you're going to put money into any deals, you're going to do any refurbs on any deals, you need to make sure you know exactly how long it's going to take you to get your money back. Because while you're waiting for your returns, you're not actually making any money, if that makes sense. If you put five grand into a property and it's going to take you five months to get your five grand back, then you're not making any money until that time. So you need to factor that into the deal. Is it a good deal or a bad deal? Now, sometimes what people look at is maybe looking at getting their five grand back at the end of the term. 
So if you've got a five year contract, you could say, well, I'm going to cash flow this. And then the last five months of, of the contract before we either uh, negotiate and carry on or, or we give the property back, I am going to look at making my five grand back then. So I am cash flowing from the word go or I'm going to pay myself a percentage back each month. All of those are fine, but just make sure that you've worked the numbers and you know exactly what it is you plan on doing. So number three, we are going to say is tenants. And when I say tenants, tenants, are they, are they a deal breaker? It goes back to the area, but tenants can be a deal breaker if you do not want to deal with those types of tenants. So if you're looking at a property and it's in a specific area, let's just say for argument's sake, you've got a property smack bang in the middle of a student area and you don't want to deal with students or you don't want students as your tenants. But you want to put high, high, highly working professionals in the property. Will it rent out and will it work? Is that a good deal or a bad deal? If you're hell bent on having professionals in there, having the highest, you know, HMO room um, rates and making sure that it is bespoken, you need to make sure that people will want to live in that area. And that's all it is. So it's by knowing the area, but knowing the tenant types for the area. I speak about this a hell of a lot because I see a lot of people trying to shoehorn certain tenant types into properties just because that's the deal that's laid in front of them. That is a bad deal then. You need to adjust yourself. You need to get over yourself in effect and think to yourself, what is the best type of tenant, the best type of room rates for this area? Sort of start there and work your way backwards. And if they're not the type of tenants that you want to have working, that you want to be working with or that you want to have in your property, then it's a bad deal. It's not a deal for you. And this is what I always say to everybody. Deals are not always deals when they're not deals. Because, you know, I know it sounds stupid, but if you're going for a specific type of tenant in a specific type of property and you come across a deal with a landlord that's not in that area that's not that type of tenant then it's not a deal that you want to be taking on and that's just what i'm saying if it's a deal and it's in the right area then it is a good deal so knowing your numbers knowing your area and knowing your type of tenants that you want to be working with before you actually start sending all your marketing before you start really digging deep into what it is you your service and your business is going to give out is really really important number four is the landlord the landlord you may say well i'm not going to have many dealings with the landlord if we're doing rent to rent won't he leave us to it in most cases yes if you're doing a good job and you're getting out there and you're getting it sorted and you're getting it done they will leave you to it and that is what we want Really, that's the service in rent rent that we're offering. It's giving the landlords peace of mind and hassle free investing. We deal with the hassles through our systems and through our business. But some landlords won't leave you alone. Some landlords want to be hands on still. Some people just cannot leave it. Uh, and you need to recognize that straight away when you're in negotiations with landlords. You need to be seeing how hands on they want to be. I have seen people doing rent to rent and the landlords are just turning up. They're walking in the properties as if they're still in charge of it all, as if they obviously they, they do own it. But you've also got to think of your tenants. Your tenants do need space. They are paying to live in this property, not to be hassled and have people wandering around them all the time yeah checkups are good uh random you know sort of inspections of communal areas are always a good idea just popping in to say hello it never hurts you know it's all about the rapport it's all about making sure that they feel comfortable but having a landlord looking over your shoulder or even just a difficult person you know people out there can be very difficult if you've got a landlord that is just awkward won't answer your calls when you when you need them to do something or you know, you're forever chasing and, and they're just they're just difficult people. You need to take that into account. Is this a good deal or a bad deal? If you want a landlord to be hands on and around, that's great. But if you don't, then you need to look for the red flags. You need to make sure that you're not do, getting into bed or doing a deal with these people that maybe last five years. It's going to make it a living hell. I haven't ever seen anybody in that situation where it is actually a living hell, but I have seen it where 
after a while, some some boundaries and some ground rules have had to be sort of renegotiated with the landlords. So talk about this when you're negotiating. Obviously, don't talk about this at the viewings and things. You don't want to be doing all of this early on. But as you start to get the numbers going, if you've agreed a fee, agreed numbers, sort of talk about what your expectations are to them and also talk about what their expectations are. So, you know, it, it is all about us being left to look after the property to make sure that it's run and it's 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 sufficient. We can do you quarterly reports with pictures and things if you would like of the property. So at the end of the day, you're getting your money's worth because um, that's the service that we provide. We can't have you just wandering backwards and forwards in and out of the property. So do make sure these are people that you want to work with. And of course, lastly, number five is the property itself. I see a lot of people, and this is why I am out here trying to warn people, looking at uh, rent-to-rent deals, looking at deal sourcing deals, and the properties just are not. Now, if you're going to do a refurb uh, and you're going to put some money into it, it doesn't really matter if you're looking at changing a few bits and bobs, new bathrooms, maybe rearranging a few uh, petition walls and stuff like that if you go in with the mentality or or with the plan of doing that then that's fine but if you're going to be basically taking it on sprucing it up a bit and you walk in and your first impression is these rooms are a little bit small and i have seen quite um quite nice properties but with small bedrooms because they tried to get on suites in all of the different rooms and it just makes it feel a little bit pokey that's your first impression. That's going to be your tenant's first impression. Now, you can dress these up and you can still make them work. And I have properties with relatively small rooms that rent out very, very well. But again, it goes back to knowing your area, your tenant type and what their expectations are. Obviously, the more room you can give people, the better the rooms will rent out, the quicker they'll rent out. And also the tenants will probably stay longer because they've got plenty of room to maneuver and to live. But if you go in and the layout isn't very good or there's maybe four rooms sharing a bathroom between them all, now, that can work in some areas and certainly works in student areas. But I do find more and more people who share bathrooms are more than happy to share it with another person or maybe three maximum. But when you start going to four, you need to have um, a pretty big bathroom and maybe even a side toilet or something like that, because obviously that's a lot of people going in, having showers, doing what's what. And if you're left hanging and you need the toilet uh, or every now and again, then uh, you're not going to enjoy living there, are you? So these are all things to look at. So the property and the layouts are very good. I always look at the layout of the property first. So I've been in a lot of properties that are very ran down, um, that don't look very good. But I always look at the layout and I think to myself, if this layout is pretty much sand, it just needs some carpets, it just needs some painting and maybe some new furniture, then I would look potentially at offering on that deal because I think it is a deal. Uh, it's not a bad deal, but if the layout is is a bit pokey, is a bit um, is not quite right to start with, then it's a bad deal. Then it's not really one you want to be getting into just because it may be your first opportunity to do a deal doesn't mean it's a good deal. So I've laid out the five areas there that I look for on whether it's a good deal or a bad deal. What I always say to people is plan it out yourself and know what you're looking for. So that when you actually do walk through the door of these properties, you can uh, run through your own little check sheet to say, you know, I, I like this. You know, what, what's the landlord like? Whilst you're doing viewings, I would write things down. I would make notes um, and I would sort of lay it out as well. So it's easy for you just to write down notes for the living room, for the kitchen, for the bathrooms and all of that sort of thing. Sort of have some boxes that you can just scribble your notes into if you're anything like me, which hopefully you're not. I used to scribble all my notes down on my sheets and then I would find that I didn't actually know what I was looking at or referring to with the particular comments that I would write down. So, um, yeah, by having it all laid out, which I do now so that I can just say, oh, bedroom one, right. I'll just write down what I can see in there. Bedroom two, bedroom three. You know, if you're looking at an eight bed and let's just say bedroom six and bedroom eight have got issues, you write those down in under those columns you know when you get home or when you're doing your deal stacking exactly what you're looking at. It just makes life a little bit easier. So any any bad deals in property can, can potentially be turned into good deals if you are surrounded by the right people that can support you and help you and point you in the right direction. Or maybe you know yourself. 
Um, and it is about making sure that you're going to be doing good deals. Don't always offer on everything that you see. If it doesn't feel right, it's not right. There's always another deal around the corner. It's not like we're absolutely struggling to find deals. Um, they are there. We've just got to be out there actively searching for them, actively out there marketing for them and pushing forward in what we're doing. And by having a good plan and a good base to know exactly what you're looking for and what you're looking at, you'll put yourself on the right track to success. So, guys, that leads to the end of this episode. Again, thank you very much for joining me. Reach out on social media if you have any questions. Come and join us in the Rent to Rent Business Builder Facebook group on Facebook, obviously. And uh, come and say hello there. And um, yeah, at the end of the day, I will be back next week with some more exciting episodes. Um, use the free resources that I'm offering to you because they won't be there forever. And um, like I say, if you use them and you get some value from them, reach out to me. Let me know. Uh, and let me know um, how they've helped you because that's what it's all about. That's what the podcast is all about. That's what I'm here to do. So guys, take care. Keep focusing on that vision. Keep moving forward and I shall see you all next week. Bye for now. Thank you for listening, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please subscribe and share the podcast with others. And if you could take a minute to leave the show a review, that would really mean a lot to me as well. Lastly, why not head over to the Property Unleashed Facebook group? And if you do, I'll see you there. Take care and make sure you keep focusing on your vision. Bye for now.